This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Iron Bean Coffee Company is a premium small batch roast to order veteran owned coffee company. All of their beans are highly are high quality coffee beans directly imported from places such as Honduras, Peru, Ethiopia, Indonesia, and other far off lands. Uh, you can save even more money with a subscription service. You can also get gift cards for your loved ones and, of course, free shipping over $50. Be sure to check them out and all the great coffees that they have over at ironbeancoffee.com. That is Iron Bean Coffee Company, America's local coffee roaster. Austin, I was on my way to the gym this morning. Hi, YouTube. Hi, Discord. Austin, I was on my way to the gym this morning, and someone was driving like an absolute psychopath. I mean, one of the worst one of the worst drivers I've seen um, on a surface road, especially in a long time. And he had a Florida license plate, and I'm just going to leave it at that. 5 a.m.? No, I, I, I only do the 5 a.m. trips to the gym on the weekdays. It was, it was I don't know. 9 a.m., somewhere between 9 and 10 a.m. You're just wrong on this one, Austin. You are just wrong. All right, Jared. Let's go ahead and start our Ask Sloopcast episode. We go barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? I'm doing all right, Jared. How are you doing today? I'm uh, I'm doing okay. Uh, Austin has all of these wrong takes about drivers in our in our chat right now. Uh, he's just he's just so wrong. I feel like everyone I feel like everyone thinks their city's drivers are the worst. Uh, and. It's just not like Columbus drivers are not bad. I promise you this. I yeah, promise I, you this. By big city standards, they are not bad. Yeah, I, I travel for work and I've I've been to a number of cities, east coast to west coast. Columbus Columbus is not even close to the top of worst drivers. It also really, really helps that we're pretty well engineered too. Like the, oh, dude, I, I, our, our, our highways I miss, and I our miss, Yeah, I miss oh, I miss Columbus's um, road infrastructure. It's so easy getting to Dublin to Obets or, or of all or... the places you said, Obets. <laughs> of all the places in, in the Columbus area, you could have said you picked Obets. Well, I was thinking one corner to the other corner. Okay. That's or, fair. Or yeah. Or Grove that's city fair. to Grove city to Westerville. So much easier compared to like the Raleigh area, or it's just like, you got one road and then two half loops. There's no, there's no easy way getting like, oh, oh, I'm, I'm on the east side of Raleigh and I'm trying to get to, to, um, to Durham. What's the easiest way? Oh, the one path that everybody else takes. Yeah. 270 yeah. is a godsend. And the, in the <laughs> yeah. inner loop is also very nice. Uh, Kyle, we should actually probably get to talking about actual, uh, whatever the, <laughs> of course, as far as I know, the first Ask Sloopcast question is going to be about traffic. So, like, it could, <laughs> could be. Weather it, could talk. be. it could be weather talk. It could be. <laughs> Atlanta is the weirdest traffic city I've ever seen in my entire life. I am still doing it. I don't care. Atlanta is the seriously the weirdest traffic city I've ever seen in my life. Um, it is miserable. But, and again, like, I've never... I haven't, I haven't been to Atlanta in a while at this point. What I found so striking about the traffic in Atlanta is how well the traffic in the city moves. But then, like, the second you get away from the city and into the suburbs, it becomes a nightmare. It's like the exact opposite of every other city I've ever seen. Every other city. Like, the closest you, the closer you are to the city, the worse traffic is. And then the further you get out, the better it becomes. And that's just not the case with Atlanta. It's wild. Okay, uh, 
you can tell me that's not true. And I already said I haven't been to Atlanta in a while. I'm, that was my experience the one week I was there 10 years ago. I'm basing <laughs> a lot of this off of one week 10 years ago. Well, to be fair, too, like Atlanta goes from like 10 lanes each way. I don't know if it's 10 lanes, but I feel like it's 10 lanes <laughs> um, going each way. And then it goes down to three lanes, two lanes, yeah. like on the way outer Miles. side. So everybody, everybody's just trying to merge all together there. Let's, let's, let's get to the actual questions. All right, cool. Uh, Buckeye Zach, first question here. What are some ways that the basket bucks can overcome their second half woes in order to have success in the big 10 and thus the NCAA tournament? Um, they, they have to, they have to do something better on defense. Um, and I don't know what, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, geez, Austin. It's like you listen. Oh crap. We're still on the sloop hoops thing. Oh no. I need to change it. Uh, <laughs> Austin, we seriously spent, I don't know how much time in the last episode. And I know you weren't here for the recording. Um, I don't know how much time in the last episode saying Ohio state's best center is six, eight. And that's a problem that we said it. I, I said it like five times. Oh, their best center is six eight. That's that's a huge huge problem. Um. So you coming in here and saying, you know, Kyle Young needs to grow six inches is um, just shows you how much of the same wavelength you and I are on. Really, the easiest answer. It's not. It's not gonna. It's not a way to fix it, though. But what are ways up the the basketball team can overcome their second half woes? Be more consistent. <laughs> Consistency, defense, an actual center. Like it's all, it's all the same things we've been saying for for weeks and months. I'm, unfortunately, that's it. Yeah, a consistent defensive center. There you go. I would uh, take that. I would absolutely take that. I'm not sure what Nomad is asking here. Buckeye Esquire, we also said that last episode. Yeah. Zed Key needs to be better. Yeah. Nomad asks, when can we 80% know the too deep? Oh, the, 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 the too deep depth chart. When, when will we know like 80% of it is how I interpreted that. Um, I... I kind of feel like maybe we know 80% of the two deep now. I don't know. Maybe not. Uh, I think we'll, I think we'll really know after, after the spring. Um, Tom and I did a depth chart prediction a few weeks back and we did them independently and we came up with a lot of the same answers. So we, Kyle and I definitely came to more than an 80% consensus. Now, Kyle and I coming to a consensus isn't. It isn't like us coming, isn't us correctly predicting. We don't know if we correctly predicted in, until September. And like, there's always going to be injuries and surprises. Like none, none of us had, had Burke starting and being the best corner for the entire year. Not, 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 no one had that on their bingo card. So nope. I don't know. Um, I feel like we probably have at least 60% of it now. And I'm, I'm not giving myself a lot of credit. Like, I feel like that's me leaving a lot of room. Um, course the the two deeps tough simply because like who are the like i can tell you who the five starting offensive linemen are going to be and probably in the correct spots backups that's that's going to be a lot tougher so i don't know may, maybe it's not maybe it is 60 maybe it's legitimately 60 or less um i don't know um well we'll know a lot better post spring because yep. Like in the weeks after the spring game, like come May one, 
there'll, there'll be a lot of kids figure out exactly where they are in the depth chart and transfer. That mm-hmm. that's the first thing we'll see, um, yeah. and we'll have a better idea of who is still on the team at that point and where they're stacking up as far as their depth chart and everything else. So um, we'll figure that out. We'll just, we'll, uh, I, I, so I'll, you know, I'm just going to, I'm going to say May 1st, the answer to the question, I'm going to say May 1st. Yeah. About six guys, Austin. Yeah. It's something like that. Uh, and based off of my assumptions on, okay, we don't, we don't openly talk about players transferring here. They're going to hit that easily that I'm, I'm not at all. No, it's not, not in the era of the transfer portal. It's not Ohio state went into the spring, went into the spring the past couple years being like one or two guys over. And then we're just handing out scholarships to walk ons left and right Mm -hmm. come fall. Yeah. Here's an interesting It's not an from... accident that they're going into spring this year with like six, six over. That was the plan. Here's a question from Nomad. Should the Big Ten entertain flip-flopping location of the football and basketball championship locations? Football and Soldier Field, basketball and Gainbridge. Uh they they've already made it pretty clear that they're going to do the Big Ten football championship in in a dome so if we're talking about a flip-flop it would be to detroit that's or potentially uh the vikings i don't i don't don't know who's sponsoring it but it's where it's the place where the vikings play um yeah austin i think indianapolis does a great job i i like indianapolis as a city it's i it's basically columbus like i don't it's Indianapolis is basically Columbus at this point. Um, so it's, uh, yeah, I, I think Indianapolis does a great job. Um, maybe Minnesota, but maybe Detroit. It would be in a dome, though. It's not going to be Soldier Field. It would be a dome. Yeah, co- correct. Yeah. Um, but guy Esquire asks here, does Harry Miller's foundation and Paris Johnson's foundation Doing a joint <laughs> philanthropic <laughs> venture signal. Anything about Miller's place on the team? Um, I think it does help quell uh, issues, not issues, rumors, concerns from fans um, about him transferring because that was absolutely a thing that you see on message boards all the time. And I, I'm not... I'm not blaming people for thinking that because of the mystery that his status was shrouded in all last season. Um, There are people who will tell you that it was an injury, that it was not an injury, that there were this reason or that reason, or like there's a, it's, there's a lot of conspiracy theories out there about why Harry Miller wasn't available. Um, and I'm not I'm not going to get into any of them because I can't confirm any of them is true. Uh, so so I won't speak on it. I so I, I here, here. so I so I won't so I won't speak on it. Gangland. Um, so the. Um, so I won't speak on it. But but I do think that he'll be in Columbus for the rest of 2020. Excuse me, 2022, whatever year it is. Uh, no, I, I, bas- I definitely won't speak on it, Austin. Going back to basketball real quick, Nomad asks, has there ever been a day before Saturday where the top six teams all lost? Another basketball question? I don't know. I'm not. I don't know. It it feels like I Austin said it never happened. First time ever. There you go. I'll believe Austin. I'm not a basketball historian. Um, it is a Florida buck. Hi, Florida buck. Um, how, how did your fight go? <laughs> or whatever it was you were talking about in the chat for a moment last, last episode. Um, 
<laughs> five of six have never lost. Uh, well, five of six have lost before, oh. but never all six. Okay. Yes. Thank you. I, I don't read so good sometimes. All right. Let me, let me, let me go ahead and read this next one then. Uh, <laughs> uh, Buckeye Esquire, I heard recently that there is a, there is a segment of the fan base beat media that is souring on, on Mickey, Marani. on Mickey. Yep. Uh, is there smoke there or is that the hearsay it seems to be? Yeah. I'll, who, who on the beat is saying that would be my follow up. Nomad's not in the chat. Um, well, Esquire. Oh, it was, it was Esquire that asked. I thought you said Nomad. Um, Esquire, is someone actually on the Ohio State beat saying this? That would be interesting. Um, I, I, I don't know. I don't know why. Uh, Ohio State's player development is is great. You can say a lot of things if you want to talk about maybe where Ohio State is maybe falling short in certain areas. Offensive line recruiting has been an issue. Um, defensive back recruiting has been an issue up until like the last couple years. Um, yes, I will get the beat from, I will get the name from the beat person. It's not a main one. Okay. Um, I, I, I would be high state's player development's not an issue. Just, just look at where they're putting kids into the draft every year. I, mm -hmm. I mean, they, they take Chris Olave, who's a three star and other, and like some offensive linemen who are three stars and they turn them into great players. Ohio state has incredible success with putting three star kids into the NFL. And like none of the five star yeah. kids are complaining. Like I, I don't see, uh, I, I, I yep. don't, I, I don't understand where that motivation would be coming from that he's somehow like Ohio state doesn't have a ton of injury concerns, which is another thing. The strength and conditioning coach is responsible for making sure that the players are, are flexible and, and, you mm -hmm. know, is not injury prone. What's the opposite of injury prone injury resistant, that they are as injury resistant as possible. And Ohio state doesn't have a whole lot of injury issues. Um, hell, Okay, yeah, no. Healthy is more of a status, Austin. Um, I, I'm talking more as a durable would be a good word. Um, we'll get we can do durable. Injury. I'm gonna go injury resistant though. Um, injury avoidant. I don't know. I don't know. All right, Point is, is that I I don't know where. I don't know why or where that would be coming from. All right, Jared, before we before we get to the next question, let's let's go ahead and take a quick ad break here. Let's go ahead and, let's go ahead and hear a few of the uh, great coffee options over at the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Yeah, yeah. Um, let's talk about Kyle. We're gonna go into the back room. Everyone, meet me in the back room. Don't just just stay quiet, stay calm. In the back room, we keep the murder coffee. Yeah, that's right. It's 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 the murder coffee. It's the murder brand coffee. It's the sister or child brand. We have to we have to speak about the murder coffee company in whispers. It's it's in the back room. It doesn't play nice with others. Just proceed with a little bit of caution. First, we have the serial killer. Uh, the serial killer is a vanilla buttercream flavored coffee. Um, it is a uh, single origin Brazilian beans. Uh, the stay awake. This is the one murder brand coffee that is, um, not flavored. Um, this is a, this is a non-flavored coffee. It is a dark roast. It is highly caffeinated. Um, they, they, they really want, and again, it's called the stay awake. They really want you to know that this is, this is a highly caffeinated coffee, uh, notes of chocolate with hints of vanilla, walnut. This it says that this blend is not for the virgin tongue. Proceed with caution. Proceed with caution with all the murder brand coffees. Then we have the bloodbath, which is a red velvet cake flavored coffee. Then the turning blue, which is a cinnamon blueberry crumble. And then we have the solace. 
which is a ginger snap coffee. I don't know why the ginger snap coffee is called Solace. I do, but I won't repeat it. Proceed with caution. You can find all of these things in the back room at the ironbeancoffeecompany.com. That is the Iron Bean Coffee Company, America's local coffee roasters. I Austin, like yeah, you, you don't have to say the you don't have to say the quiet part loud, buddy. You don't got to say the the quiet part loud. Next question, next question we have from Nomad. Is there a Sloopcast tournament pool this year? If so, are we still doing a Team Gray versus Team Scarlet? All right. Uh, Cal and I, um, in our collective ADHD minds, um, we were trying to remember, um, are there any confirmed gingers on the server? Uh, Nomad, I'm pretty sure. Um, the... <laughs> wink. The... <laughs> Uh, hey guys, I'm going to ask everyone here a question. Cause I think one of you did it. Um, did one of you run our poll, our, our, our tournament brackets for us last year? Nomad did. It was nomad. And he's running it this year again. He already said awesome. In announcements. Was he, po he doesn't get to post in announcements. That's my channel. <laughs> um uh that that's fine i believe him and he can do it uh that's one less thing for me to do no here's the thing he can take liberties it involves me not doing work <laughs> that i'm totally cool with that i'm 100 percent cool with that uh yeah so yes we are doing it and apparently nomad's the one running it awesome yes all right. Um, next question here. Uh, sun card. Good to have a sun card uh, question in here. Would you like? Would you like a forty team super conference for college football? No. I'm sorry. I, they're they're dividing people up into key, into team Kyles and team Jareds, and it was distracting me. I'm sorry. What was the question? Would you like a 40 team super conference for college football? 40 or zero. That's too many. I'm capping it at 24 and even 24 is probably too many, but that's where I'm capping it. I think 16, <laughs> it doesn't, is, if it means I think 16 is the perfect game regular season. I think 16 is the perfect number. Um, I, I get why you say that, but people want to make money. So I'm thinking 24. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm thinking that's where we have it. It's divisible by four, which makes it great for pod systems. Um, or for that matter, divisible, uh, by six, which makes it better or makes it good for even bigger pod systems. Um, so it's just, it, it also comes like, how do you schedule it? How many teams, how many conference games, how many pod games, how do the teams from the other pods play each other? Then I said 24, didn't I? You did gangland. I said 24. If I didn't say 24, I meant to say 24. Um, yeah. So I think, I think, I'm not saying 24 is the perfect number, um, but I think it's a likely-ish number. Like, I think there's a decent chance we end up with, like, three conferences, 24 teams apiece. And those are your power three conferences. I think that's a totally possible future. Totally possible. Hey, Austin, the NFL survived for several years as a 31-team league. It was messy. Someone had to take their bye week on week one. It was stupid, but they did it. <laughs> Make spring game counts for seeding. <laughs> what? How? Who? 
How do you count the wit? Everyone, everyone would be one and one. Do you not know how spring games work, Gangland? Everyone's one and one after the spring game. Well, then it's not a spring game. You can't make the spring game count. That would be like, I don't know, making the all-star game count. And who would do something stupid like that? Oh, here comes our baseball defenders in the chat. <laughs> I thought, I thought, right, the NBA, another... I thought the NBA did that too. No, no, they they had the no. best record. Whoever whoever had the best record, was had the best of set or had the home advantage. Well, I know they got rid of it. I know they got rid of it, Austin. the The joke is that they ever did it to begin with. It's it's I mean, here's the thing. Like. Yeah, I don't I don't need stakes in my all star games. That's that, that I think that defeats the purpose. I think we're all just out here trying to have fun. Like it's it's an exhibition game. Um, to me, if I was in charge of all star games and like, I don't know how many of y'all are old enough to remember this, but back in the day, like in, in the like in the 90s. Uh, MTV used to do these things called rock and jock and it was stupid. It was. It was stupid, but it was fun. And to me, that's what an all-star game should be. Make it as fun and as stupid as possible. That, that would be my, like, let's, let's take this as not seriously as possible. So I mean, ball? I'm not against that, <laughs> uh, except slam ball feels, I don't know. That feels like a high potential for injury. Um, yes, it does. I, but, but even like, especially like the NFL, like you can't have you is in the end, like you can't do half speed football. You can't get a bunch of professionals together and tell them to play football at half speed and expect it to be anything. So like, screw it. Let's, let's put our flags on them. Let's, let's do some goofy shit. Like let's stop taking this so seriously. And about when I say, let's put some flags on them. That's not me. Like, Oh, uh, you, you can't even hit anyone anymore. I liked football better when people had concussions and suffered lifelong depression and suicidal ideations from, from from concussions that was much better no and why don't you just put flags on them no i'm not doing that i'm like literally like it just might be fun to watch a bunch of nfl players play flag football like that might just be incredibly entertaining all punter teams see now we're talking now we're talking <laughs> uh that's all the questions jerry we have um anybody else in our chat here have any questions you want to ask here? Austin, yeah, that's the thing, though, buddy. They're always it's always going to be half-assed. So I say embrace the half-assery and make it goofy. Like, let's stop. Stop trying to tell me to take All Star games seriously. It's like people who complain. No one plays defense in the NBA All Star game. Good. Good. You had people, you had people trying to take charges in an all-star game. No, don't play defense on an all-star game. No one wants that. Score some points. The ball partially inflated with helium. Um, Buckeye Square, I believe they tried that on Mythbusters and it didn't help. Because it actually made the ball... It made it made the ball lighter, but that actually made it less able to like pierce the air because the air is a liquid, right? So I, I believe making the ball lighter actually made it um actually made it travel less far because it, like I said, it was it was more apt to meet wind and air resistance. 
it being heavier was actually better. It's been a long time since I've seen it, but I'm pretty sure they did that on on Mythbusters. Or at least something like it. Air is liquid, Jared. Yeah. I mean, it's aerodynamics and like what's uh aqua dynamics what's what's the aerodynamics and hydrodynamics thank you buckeye esquire they follow all the same rules there's actually legitimately no difference between hydrodynamics and aerodynamics uh you'll actually see people when they're doing like before they i didn't say it was water i said it was a liquid which is not like scientifically accurate. Don't, don't try and back me into that corner. I was just talking about how hydrodynamics and, and uh, aerodynamics follow all the same principles. That's all I was saying. Like it, when, when they do like scale model cars, you'll actually see them like before, before it becomes a, bo- a full scale car and they put it in an, an air tunnel, they'll actually do it. They'll actually like put it in a fish tank first and run dye through the fish tank. Um, the clay sculpting thing. Yeah. When they like clay sculpt out the cars and they want to test it for aerodynamics, they drop it in a tank of water. They run a current, they like give the water a current and then they put dye in it and they see how the air flows over the car. Cause it all, Hydrodynamics and aerodynamics follow all the same principles. They're the same thing. Weird tidbit you're getting on today's Ask Skloopcast. Just one is wet. (laughs) Don't. Don't. (laughs) Don't start. (laughs) We we know. Gangland, don't take the bait. Gangland, do not take the bait. He's trolling. He knows he's wrong. He's trolling. Don't take, don't guys, don't take the bait. Florida, you're doing it too. Don't take, ah, also taking the bait. Now, you, of course, now you're taking my bait. <laughs> uh, well, if you don't want me to start it, do you want to end it then, Jaren? Uh, uh, yeah, unless, unless you guys can, uh, yeah, yeah, Austin, that's too easy, buddy. You're better than that. The, uh, any last second Sloopcast questions in the chat about hydrodynamics, aerodynamics, football, basketball, um, not baseball. Ducks. Ducks. Not, no, I'm not. I am currently not accepting duck based questions. Favorite breed of duck, the mallard. Did I have an immediate answer for that? Yes, I did. Uh, is, is Drake, Drake is a, a breed? I believe a Drake is a male duck. I believe that's like the technical term for a male duck is a Drake. But I could be wrong. Feel free to Google check me on that one. Ow, my back just did something stupid. All right, Kyle. Um, no, it's a Kodak. Drake is a rapper. Okay, so now we're just making, we're just doing word association now. You guys, these this isn't, guys, I need you guys to learn that there is a difference between making a joke and just doing word association, because you guys, right now, you guys are just doing word association. Well, it's not I thought, you, I, thought, I thought you were going more of like, of everyone, this is the Ask Sloopcast, not the Sloop Cats only episode. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the, we don't talk about the Sloop Cats only episode in the public, Kyle. That's uh, that nope. is that is behind the paywall, and it will remain there. All right. Well, let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and end this episode. Then, if we have no other questions, then. All right. Um, tonight's ending music will be by a Cincinnati-based band called Saving Escape. Um, oh, Austin oh. had one. <laughs> um. Uh, uh, 
You know what? Go, go ahead. We'll do saving escape next time. It's fine. Go ahead, Austin. What you got, Austin? Go for it, buddy. We'll, we'll do saving escape on the next episode. So this band no, was formed in Youngstown. Oh, are you throwing, are you throwing me a new band right now? But they are Columbus based now. Okay. He's throwing me in. He's throwing me a band I haven't heard of before. Ghost Soul Trio. Hmm. And their song, Good Fortune. You know what, guys? Austin's legitimately like one of our longest tenured fans. I don't I I guess I'm going to trust him. Um, Austin, you're you're putting a lot of trust on the line right now, and I need you to understand that. Like, this is a big gamble for you. Um, I'm going to trust him. If you don't like it, talk to Austin. Kyle, um, we're trusting Austin, I guess. All right. Um, they were just dropping. They describe their, they describe their sound. They, they describe their sound as an indie pop sensible sensibility with an expert ex I cannot talk <laughs> experimental edge. Experimental pop punk. Is that what you said? <laughs> pop punk. Sure. Sure. Okay. Guys, we're, we're going to find out together. So, um, with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Goal Soul Goals. Oh. Ghost Soul Trio doing the I'm going to say their name one more time just cuz I screwed it up the first time and I want everyone to be able to hear it in case you like it. Ghost Soul Trio. The name of the song is Good Fortune. <laughs>